And now, Good Humor's WWE Superstars Cookie Sandwiches present Summer Slam Kickoff. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have so much in store for you, you'll never see it coming. The stakes are high and the competition is next level as we count down the minutes to SummerSlam. And it's all going down inside the WWE Thunderdome. We got six championships up for grabs and that is not all. Also reputations on the line and in one case, a career also on the line. Hello everyone, welcome on into the SummerSlam kickoff show. I'm Charlie Caruso and joining me, we have this beautiful crew surrounding me right here at this last <laughs> desk that I'm so very excited to introduce. Right here to my right, he is a two-time WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. Booker T. Hey, hey, I just want to say it feels good, guys, to be back in the building, and uh, we, we're here, guys. Thunderdome! Thunderdome! <laughs> WWE. <laughs> Get the brand. Yeah, don't Get forget that. <laughs> Come on. And this lady right here, look, she has really paved the way for so many women in WWE. I would like to also say that includes myself. She was the first female commentator in WWE history. She also is a killer in the kitchen. You've seen her on IG. Ooh, she has a cookbook on the way. Oh. Renee Young. Cooking up a storm, guys. I am so excited to be here doing my last hurrah here with WWE, and I'd be no other place in here at SummerSlam with this beautiful panel <laughs> in the Thunderdome. <laughs> <laughs> the WWE Thunderdome. The Thunderdome. It's all happening. Okay, look, it's 2020. Things have gone none of our ways, <laughs> including you, unfortunately, because you were supposed to already have been a Hall of Famer. You're so a Hall of so Famer. we're going to introduce you as Hall of Fame elect JBL. No, I go to the Hall of Fame of the whole damn world, in, but I'm excited here because I'm with King Booker, that is. Miss Renee, and whoever the guy is to my left. <laughs> and I'm in the WWE Thunderdome and SummerSlam. I'm excited. Well, I'm going to tell you who this guy is to your left. <laughs> tell him, Charlie. Okay, you can find him a few different places. Him, he is a man that wears many hats. You can Thank find him on Hot 97. You can find him on ESPN now. Radio. His name, JBL, is Peter Rosenberg. You can also That's... find him on the block list of <laughs> Jerry Lawler. <laughs> oh! Oh! On the record, on the record, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, Icon who paved the way, oh my God. radio schlub Peter Rosenberg. I'm here. I'm happy to be here with you and guys. And you're blocked by Jerry Lawler. I am blocked. I am blocked. Loving it up. That is correct. Okay, guys, we are here inside the WWE Thunderdome. Obviously, all of our fans, the WWE Universe, can't be here with us in person. But there is some good news. There is still one place all of you can catch all of the action going down inside the WWE Thunderdome tonight. That, of course, being on the WWE Network. So right now, head on over to WWENetwork.com and subscribe because that is the only place, I will repeat, you will be able to watch SummerSlam and also next weekend's pay-per-view payback. Now, we have so many amazing matches on the card tonight. I mentioned earlier there are six titles on the line. So let's get to talking about what you can expect. WWE Champion Drew McIntyre looking to defend his title not only for himself, but for every superstar who has been wronged by Randy Orton when he takes on the legend killer himself. Well, you know who has a busy night tonight? Asuka. It starts off with the SmackDown Women's Championship. Asuka against Bayley, the champion. But that's not the end for Asuka, because after that, she has a Raw Women's Championship match against the champion, Sasha Banks. We're going to see Asuka all the belts. Mark my words. Asuka earning her paycheck tonight. We also have two other ladies in action. Former best friends, now turned bitter foes, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville will go at it tonight. What was once a hair versus hair match is now a no disqualification as Sonya Deville has upped the stakes and now the loser must leave WWE forever. In a drama a la Guiding Light or As the World tur Turns, there's there's poisoning, <laughs> there's, there's mischief, there's things you don't understand, and guess what? There's a Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Street Profits and Andrade and Angel Garza with Selena Vega. Oh, we love the drama here in WWE. Tonight, Dominic Mysterio looks to punish the Monday Night Messiah, Seth Rollins, for what he did to his father, Ray, at Extreme Rules when these two do battle in a street fight. Now, even with Ray in Dominic's corner, though, Seth is ready to deliver a beatdown in Dominic's first ever WWE match. I'll tell you what, this is a match I am personally very excited for, the U.S. Championship match. Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin banned from ringside. Apollo Crews defending against my guy, MVP. And that match is streaming live right here on the SummerSlam kickoff show. And finally, tonight the destruction will be otherworldly as the reigning Universal Champion, the monster Braun Strowman, goes up against the fiend Bray Wyatt in a Falls Count Anywhere match where all hell will surely break loose. Firefly Theater presents Braun and 
elixir. Love is just a way to trick you into an emotional and physical burden. Ron, you know you've always wanted to be together. Follow me, Bron. Bron must still be wandering in that filthy swamp somewhere. But now, he is playing. And he wants something that Bron has. And until he gets what he wants, none of you are safe. Love can make the most glorious angels crash him down with broken wings. He will remove your mask and show everyone your true form, including you! Get out. Wake up! This isn't you! Wake up! Love can actually be a terrible thing. Fiend, you can have whatever you want. I am the monster! <laughs> Love can only lead to pain and suffering. <laughs> the best thing we can all do is be more like him. A being that is built on rage and fueled by him. Well, kind of like the fiend reappears and disappears. Little we have, switcheroo we've over here. We've done the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he's got to rejig on the fly, and that's what we've done, ladies and gentlemen. We have done that in, in beautiful fashion. Okay, uh, Booker, I want to start with you here. Uh, you know, we have known the fiend, Bray Wyatt, to really manipulate and get inside his opponent's head. Now, in this case, we've seen the monster Braun Strowman also do the same, kind of flipping the script on the fiend. How do you think this might have thrown the fiend off his game? Um, I think it threw him off just a little bit. Um, the thing is, who knows Bray Wyatt best? Uh, Braun Strowman. Uh, he's not going to be tricked up by anything. He's a guy that can go blow for blow, 
with Bray Wyatt, the Fiend, or whoever. Um, and at the end of the day, man, I think Bray Wyatt actually has the upper hand in a situation like this. I don't know what you think. Well, you got to think of somebody like you talk about the, the 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 mental aspect of things. I mean, obviously Braun Strowman can now match Bray Wyatt there, but then you look at the physical aspect of this. I mean, I think Bray Wyatt's in a bit of trouble here yeah, tonight. I think you have to look at whose game they're playing. You know, you have guys that have come along several times. You have guys like Papa Shango, guys like Undertaker, Shango. guys like uh, the Ultimate Warrior, who all had that different level play their own game you didn't want to play their game and I think that's what Braun Strowman is doing as big and talented as he is I give the lean here to the fiend so you remember the time when Booker I don't want to bring up something unpleasant Booker had to deal with the boogeyman and the boogeyman was <laughs> terrifying and freakish and I don't want to say how things played out but Booker had to deal with a lot if Booker had gone full boogeyman back at boogeyman who knows what happens and that's essentially what the circumstance is here he has taken Braun has said I'm going to out fiend the Fiend. I think that's the only mindset you can get into, right? I mean, what other game plan could you possibly come up with in this I'm scenario? I'm about to bust his ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're you're gonna gonna have, there's no have, worms. There's no worms around here. You're good. You're going to have you're another have Hall of Famer block you uh, on Twitter. <laughs> I guarantee it. Please don't block Okay, me. guys, uh, we got to leave the discussion right there. Because, but we all know one thing. It has really been a roller coaster in so many different ways and so many different cases leading up to SummerSlam. We have the Raw Tag Team Champions standing by backstage with our colleague Sarah Schreiber. Ladies and gentlemen, with me right now, accompanied by their business managers, Zelina Vega, Andrade, and Angel Garza. Zelina, hey. first. Where's Charlie? Charlie Caruso? Yeah. She's hosting the SummerSlam kickoff panel. Uh, so, what am I doing with this? Well, it would be a shame for a beautiful rose to go to waste. <laughs> Don't you have a question that you want to ask us? Shh. Don't you yeah, have a yes, Zelina. Before we discuss your associates' raw tag team title match later tonight, do you have any comment about the accusation that you poisoned Montez Ford? Listen, bootleg Charlie. There's more important things going on right now, like the fact that my clients have a raw tag team title match. Very important. I didn't poison Montez Ford, but even if I did, which I didn't, but even if I did, it wouldn't matter because he's 100% fine now. I mean, people are blowing his whole little tummy ache way out of proportion. He proved everybody wrong when they thought that maybe he wouldn't be at 100% for this match. I mean, he cheated his way to a victory this past Monday. But besides that, people want to keep playing the blame game. Let's look at Bianca Belair, huh? She attacked me, an innocent bystander. I'm innocent. So the WWE Universe is poisoned actually by the Street Profits. And Andrade and Angel Garza are the antidote. And the next raw tag team champions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, well, I thought Sarah was going to be backstage with the Street Profits, but I suppose now it was Andrade and Angel, so which lot they said a lot. Of parts here. A lot of moving parts. But I want to ask you what's going on with Zelina. I mean, I know you're backstage. You're always getting the scoop on everything. Uh, a lot of fingers are being pointed around here. What do you think happened with Zelina Vega? Look. I can only speak from my personal experiences with the lady. Uh, she's, she's very mean to you, by the way. She has always been very rude to me. She's very self-absorbed, I would say. She really is only focused on herself and her clients, which I completely understand from a business perspective, from a personal perspective. It also paves the way for me to maybe see how she could pull off something as scandalous as possibly poisoning, poisoning one of her clients. A lot of shady business around here. A lot of people don't like Charlie what? for some reason. I've been wondering about really? that. Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Wow. It sounds like uh, personal it's, it's, it's very wow. It's, it's, it's like yeah. stuff oh that's been goodness. going through the grapevine, but that's another <laughs> oh, story. Wait, tell Damn, me more. Huh? What, do, what do I not know? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, uh, she should cover her drinks around I'll tell you here, what it girlfriend. sounds like. It sounds like fake news to me. I mean, this this could be CGI animated. I mean, this means what moron? <laughs> really? What moron? <laughs> leaves a drink just standing open and then walks off and leaves it. Hey, man. Hey, all that is the a, time. She, she's You're doing here, right here with it. It's a risk <laughs> of the street profits. They walk around with open cups all the time. It's a constant danger. Put a napkin, There's a lot put of a napkin, napkin over the red cup. Come I'm going to argue that 2020 has been a very strange year, but 2020 has been working in the favor of one man, as we saw on Friday Night SmackDown. 
Jeff Hardy having a major accomplishment of his own against AJ Styles. Booker, why don't you take it from here? Yeah, I mean, you see Retribution coming out doing exactly what they do, but AJ Styles, a guy that's looking for an opportunity. And I say, when you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Got a big <laughs> match coming up later on, and it's for the championship. AJ Styles is trying to secure that championship, as we see right now. Everything is rolling quite smoothly, even right here. Jeff Hardy just losing his balance right here, but having to wear that knee brace came into play. Bang, right there. You see it crack, AJ, and then boom, twist, twist of fate. And then from here, guys, you know exactly what's Ten gonna happen. Ta -ta, Ta -ta, Ta -ta. Yes. And, we got new, and we got a new champion right here. What a moment. Jeff Hardy, I mean, I feel like I just seen the internet freak out. This is a huge moment he for Jeff Hardy. It. He deserves Absolutely, it. everything that he's been through over the past few months, to see him in the spotlight like this, incredible. If it was a hashtag that needed to go around, it should have been Jeff Hardy deserves it, and I like hey, it. You know what? You know what else Jeff Hardy did? He, he, it was the perfect way to christen the WWE. Thunderdome. The oh. WWE Thunder! No! <laughs> Wait, I wanted to know. I, I, like I read that. something very. Uh, <laughs> I saw something very cool the other day. This Intercontinental Title victory comes nearly 20 years after Jeff wow. Hardy won his first Intercontinental yeah. Title. Yeah. How that's, good does Jeff that's Hardy look? I mean, you look at the career span of Jeff Hardy and the fact that he is back in a title position. Uh, he looks like a million. He actually bucks. He's won his first like, uh, tag team championship in his hometown against. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was. Uh, <laughs> APA. I'm sure they beat not, one. Not just that, but uh, we got to talk about Jeff Hardy's struggle. He's gone through yep. a lot to actually he has gone come a lot. back. And how and much, and how much his struggle, I think, resonates with people in the WWE universe and other people who have been through addiction issues resonate. It resonates with them, and it means a lot. Yeah, I, yeah and you have to Jeff applaud Hardy. the man for being so open about it and being able to discuss it, because like you said, it really provides uh, an outlet for a lot of people that might be going through similar things. And, and when you work so hard, you feel like you deserve something. When you feel like you deserve something, a lot of times you get what you want. And yep. I think that's the case and Jeff Hardy. Mm -hmm. Well, we yeah. love to see it. We do love to see it. Look, we have so many talented superstars in the WWE, and that also includes someone else I know deserves a lot of respect and everyone on this panel really much enjoys. I'm talking about Mr. Mark Henry <laughs> earlier today. Mark Henry appeared on The Bump to talk about his SummerSlam predictions and traditions courtesies of Welch's Fruit Juice. <laughs> Please welcome on our guest, WWE Hall of Famer, Mark Henry and his beautiful children, Jacob and Joanna. SummerSlam is around the corner, which means it's almost time to go back to school. I'm not sure if I'm ready for that. <laughs> Mark, when you were thinking of your youth and drinking Welsh's grape juice, you get any of that nostalgia to come rushing back? It's just one of those, one of those tastes that just makes you smile on forever. Let's talk SummerSlam. Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre, who do you like, sir? It's hard for me to put anybody above Randy Orton, but I am a Drew McIntyre fan, and after seeing Randy Orton talk so bad to Ric Flair, I want to see Drew McIntyre put him in his place. You guys are so much fun. Enjoy watching SummerSlam with your Welch's grape juice. And we know one thing, the WWE Thunderdome has created quite the stir among the WWE Universe and beyond. So check out what everyone's had to say about it. I mean, we have Sports Illustrated buzzing, CBS Sports. We've had Fox Sports, I worked ESPN. That's I mean, right. everyone is all about the WWE Thunderdome and it makes complete sense because it really is a very cool atmosphere, especially being inside of it. I gotta tell you, it, it feels so amazing innovative. inside, right? It's crazy. Being able to watch it from home and like everybody else, like the world was waiting to see what it was gonna look like, was like, damn, we wanna work around a pandemic and work around these empty arenas. That's a hell of a way to kick it off. Yeah. And we've seen so many other sports utilize similar technology. I mean, we're watching the NBA playoffs. We see people from their respective homes, wherever they might be watching, and now it's cool because the WWE Universe can do the exact same thing. I'm glad that we didn't yeah. have the cardboard cutouts. <laughs>
Uh, yeah, why are you doing that to baseball? <laughs> why are you coming for Major League Baseball like the old man of the group that just shows up with the cardboard? You know, no, no there good. was a, a guy who bought cardboards of himself for the entire row. So it was just all him in one row. That's brilliant. That's the only good he thing about no it. He has no friends. Uh, but <laughs> let's, let's actually talk about friends. There is a match going down tonight. They were former best friends. Now they are bitter foes. I'm talking about Mandy Rose and Sonia Deville. Tonight it is no disqualification match with the loser having to leave WWE for good. Mandy, just checking on, how are you doing? SummerSlam is in two days, and I don't know what's going through Sonya's head. Mandy, I've never had someone like you in my life before. You are the most <laughs> selfish human being I've ever met in my entire life. Fire Desire was never about us. Trying to share camera time with the golden goddess. Five long years of my life wasted trying to be second best to what some eye candy that has absolutely no talent. All I want is to see you hurt. It's in your bare leg of me! You will never go! You will never be better than me! I will use every ounce of my being to ruin your life. This thing has gotten so deeply personal between former best friends, now bitter, bitter enemies. I will end you, Mandy! I will end you! Despite of all the bad and ugly I've seen, I need to believe that there's still good in this world. Sonia, I don't know if you know this, but so much of the good and beautiful <laughs> We've, we've been through it together when we were best friends. I'm choosing to believe that the Sonia I know, the Sonia that I have been inseparable with for the past five years, is still out there. I say we put this all behind us and get back to where we were. I choose to see the good in you. Mandy, I heard what you had to say. What I don't understand is, what is it that you want? Because you're going to end up facing me one way or another. Why don't we up the ante a little bit? Why don't we raise the stakes for SummerSlam? It's going to be me and you in that ring. But it's going to be in a no disqualification match. And the loser is going to leave WWE. I'm sick of looking at your face. So you need to wipe those tears and bring your A game, bitch. Okay, Renee, I want to direct this first question at you because as a woman, maybe you have a little bit of insight. We saw Mandy Rose, she tried to extend the olive branch sure. to her once best friend, Sonya Deville. It only infuriated Sonya to a whole nother level. Why? Do you think this happened? Well, I, I just whatever mode Sonia has kicked into at this point, I mean, this is the next level. This is a woman that's going to be gunning for future championships. I think she is looking to take that spotlight, kick Mandy Rose out of there. Uh, the other thing I can say is I am devastated that this is no longer a hair versus hair match because I was so pumped for that. I want to see someone with a shaved head. I was ready to either one. Either one of them, I would have been happy, and either one of those ladies could have pulled it I, off. I don't understand how professionals like you guys get into these loser leave town matches like I, you, to me the idea is terrifying that at the end of the day you lose the match you don't have a job anymore yeah, yeah. it's very scary uh, i think look, what's I think scarier losing your job or your hair renee <laughs> we'll find out i guess right <laughs> i think we're making trigonometry out of simple <laughs> math here i think it's very simple sonia deville yeah. saw herself as second fiddle to mandy rose as mandy rose I, sees I agree a friend with that. in sonia deville sonia deville sees an opportunity in mandy rose and i think that's all this is about and i think mandy rose is now backtracking for keeping sonia in her shadow for so long now she's like oh wait no you're gonna beat my ass tonight uh, I'm, 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 I'm gonna just lay out on this one guys <laughs> <laughs> you're not into this you don't want to have a hair no, you were no, supposed to have a hair versus no, hair no, match you turned that down oh my God, it'd be like four hair versus hair matches, just your hair alone. Did Edge challenge you? could have a hair versus yeah, hair match with yourself. To shampoo I'd love to get a prediction from all of you real quick about this match. Who do you think is going to win? Sonya, 100%. It's going to be Sonya. I think so Mandy's out of here. Yeah. Let me tell you Later something. Tuts. Mandy Rose was the toughest uh, you know, individual owned tough enough in 2015. I'm going to give the nod to Mandy Rose. Okay. 
JBL. I'm going to go uh, Sonny Deville, but I also hate the fact that we're losing one great superstar. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, two. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Mandy. I'm going with Mandy Rose. Okay. All right. We have, we, have, we have three for me. Three for me. Was it? We're oh, both two Sonya. and two. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, the Mysterio family is in the building. They are in the WWE Thunderdome. Putting up a united front as Ray, Angie, and the exciting new upstart Dominic enter. As we will preview his quest to get vengeance against the maniacal Monday Night Messiah coming up in just a bit right here on the kickoff show. There's only one treat you need to get ready for SummerSlam this year. You want some? Oh, yes, sir. That's right, Cena. Rich, creamy, and delicious. Believe that. The man does believe that. Too hot to handle and too cold to hold. Ooh, yeah. This summer, find us chilling in the frozen aisle. You can't see me. Yes, they can, Cena. I literally just said where they can find us. Take it from the man. The WWE Superstars cookie sandwiches can't be beat. And the clock continues to wind down as we inch closer and closer to SummerSlam. And one woman who has her work cut out for her this evening is Asuka. First, she will take on Bayley for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And then it's on to Sasha Banks to challenge for the Raw Women's title. We are the show. Being the role models that we are. It's so heavy. We do what needs to be done. Damn, we are good. This is our party. You're lucky you're even invited. Bailey, Sasha, I just wanted to actually congratulate you. I mean, the two of you have achieved insurmountable goals. Thank you so much, Stephanie. That means so much coming from you. Really, all we're trying to do is be role models. And what a job you've done. I mean, being a guest referee at the horror show at Extreme Rules. Sasha Banks trying to roll out of this and, and barely tossing one of the titles I in. Shirt off the official. <laughs> what, what is going on? We're even making a mockery out of a stipulation I made by brutally attacking Kyrie Sane. What the? It, Kyrie Sane and Bailey rolling. The Oscars having to choose between a championship or her best friend. Oscar's going into the back to go after Bailey. Asuka get counted out and lose her championship. Sasha Banks has won the Raw Women's title via count out. You know, I'm not sure about being role models. So at SummerSlam, Sasha, you will be defending the Raw Women's Championship. If Asuka can take out Bailey, Asuka will earn a Raw Women's title match at SummerSlam against Sasha Banks. Mocking Kyrie Sane. Asuka lock on Bailey. Tap out. Asuka's going to SummerSlam. And as for you, Bailey, remember all those enemies you've been making? Well, they will all have a chance for retribution when they compete in a triple brand battle royal with the winner facing you for the SmackDown Women's Championship. We're down to Shayna Baszler and Asuka. Bailey trying to eliminate and Asuka. Hanging on for dear life. Shayna Baszler now. Trying to lock in the Kirifuda clutch. Asuka had it scouted. Baszler eliminated. Asuka wins. She could leave SummerSlam with both titles. There's nobody that can beat us in one night. Not Asuka, not anyone. <laughs> Well, gotta respect Asuka putting in double duty tonight to win those titles. Now, first up, it's going to be Bailey for the SmackDown Women's Championship, followed by Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship. That order, of course, decided on Friday Night SmackDown with the Beat the Clock Challenge 
Naomi participating in that. So my question is, what do you think Asuka's going to do as far as her strategy? But actually, you know what? Let me start with the oh, fact that... Oh, Bailey, dose straps, oh, two belts, banks. Are they ready for Asuka? Are they going to get along? Does anybody really give a crap? Shayna, hi. The, the only thing I care about is what happens with the Raw Women's Championship. Okay. And actually, I said it this past week. I'm going to say it again. It doesn't matter how that match goes tonight because I got next. Hmm. Okay. Now, I, under, I understand your point of view, but Nia Jax actually has been very adamant about the point that she is next in line. So what would you say to that? Nia Jax doesn't care about the title. She's clearly obsessed with me. Oh. And she's shown that she knows how to find me. And all that says to me is that she's having trouble going to sleep. So if when her suspension is lifted, she would like a little help with that, I'll be more than willing to oblige. Uh, good to see you. Bye, Shana. Man, nobody likes you, Charlie. Nobody. I mean, what Dang. is the Why do? you got to do me like Dang that, Booker? Chuck. Why? Uh, I'm just saying, <laughs> wow. man. What is going on? Look, yeah. Book, Book, I've heard I the just same, happen to be in the, the wrong the place thing. at the wrong time. I've heard time. the same thing about Charlie. I don't I mean, know what it is. What is okay. going on? I like you, Chuck. Uh, I I mean, everyone, thank you so I'm, much I'm for coming to the kickoff. Yeah, what is never up with this? I've never had this problem with Renee before. I've never had this problem with somebody just bum rush the scene. You know, just oh, saying. you haven't. That I never happened. Wait, really? Never. Never. So that was the never. first time a superstar Excellent. has ever walked up ever. during the I mean, kickoff show. Yeah, I, I feel I mean? personally attacked right now. No, I'm just saying. I'm just wondering uh, it's what the point, hell Booker. is going on here. It's an excellent point, King Booker. I I'm not sure. Okay. I think look, Charlie's nice, but thank you. apparently no look, one else does. You know what? As, as scary as Shayna is, I am actually going to say that I am happier that she showed up than another group that we have seen really wreak havoc all over WWE. I think you all know who I'm talking about. Point. They were all over the Performance Center. Then they made their way here to the WWE Thunderdome for Friday Night SmackDown. I am talking about Retribution. There are rumors because of the power outages. I saw you guys when you started. We started it here in the Keep in mind, they are just rumors at this point, but there are show personnel who are telling me that these are no accident and it was actually deliberate. I do want to take you to some security camera footage that was taken from outside the WWE Performance Center. <laughs> they would tonight i wish retribution would because i got jbl booker here we're good guys <laughs> you think we're safe oh, yeah. three of us are good we got two hall of famers here booker's yeah, here break him out no yeah. way Book yeah. no yeah. Book you don't like retribution Look, one bit bro, I, I want nothing to do with retribution uh, okay wait yeah. a minute you were once part of an invasion yourself 
WCW yeah. invaded yeah. Actually, WWE. I was a part of the invasion, not the guys that was getting the hell beat out. Also, like the group just seems like they're growing, they're multiplying, uh, they're showing up whenever. Like, who are these hoodlums? Where are they coming I, from? That's What's my question. Goal? Who are they? Does anyone have any idea who they and are? Do you think they all go to Target at the same time to get the sweatsuits? You can't. That's not how a group works. You got to send in one person. They've got to gather. They them probably all. Amazon right. Prime supply, no them. Doubt. Honestly, well, they're not going look, in public. I don't know who they are. I know they're going to leave a legacy. Look at invasions that have happened here. ECW invaded, gave us the Dudley Boys. They're in the Hall of Fame. DX invades WCW. They're all in the Hall of Fame. E WCW, Booker T in the Hall of Fame. That's what we got. So you're calling These retribution groups, Hall no, no, of Famers? I'm saying invasions in history have left an incredible it. legacy. It is 2020. Anything is possible, Renee. Anything True. is possible. Sure. And, and anything is possible because tonight Dominic Mysterio will have his first ever match. Oh, WWE yeah. taking on the Monday Night Messiah, <laughs> Seth Rollins. Thank you for joining me at this contract signing as we make one of the most personal of matches official for the biggest party of the summer. You are so ungrateful. I had no choice in becoming the Monday Night Messiah and making sacrifices necessary for the greater damn good. And when is it finally going to be enough? It's never gonna be enough. The greater good that you fight for is for yourself. This was my dream, but now my dream is to kick your ass. So how about you can bring that with you? That or any tool in the toolbox, I want you to have every opportunity at your disposal so that you and your family have no excuse when I end your career before it ever, ever again. Right now, Murphy, Murphy blindsided Dominic Mysterio. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Mysterio name that will end up being the ultimate sacrifice. Right, come on, Ray. Dominic's got the equalizers. Dominic has all the rules off the table in a street fight. The Monday Night Messiah has messed with the wrong family. Can Dominic Mysterio get revenge at SummerSlam? This is absolutely gruesome, but I've got to throw this over to Booker, JBL. I mean, you guys, as in-ring competitors, Hall of Famers, what does it feel like to be hit with a kendo stick? I mean, look at this. You know, for me, guys, this will be it. This will be that moment, that moment we talked about earlier, the shucky-ducky, quack-quack <laughs> moment of the night. 
<laughs> and, 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 and I say that because uh, <laughs> not what I expected. You know, you know get, getting hit with that kendo stick is is serious. It's serious business. Yeah. Um, but to get um, bruised, battered, and torn, that's something totally different. But it tells me a whole lot about Dominic showing up for a fight. This kid might be ready. Well, he now, that's a man showing he, up for a fight He can right take there. a beating. We don't know if he can give one or not. Look, just because he comes from a Hall of Fame pedigree of Rey Mysterio, so did David San Martino. Mm -hmm. He didn't live up to the great Bruno. Ouch. You know, Charlotte Flair did live up to the great Ric Flair. So you don't know just because his father mm -hmm. was this great luchador whether he is or not. And, Booker, you remember, we worked for Mr. Sagarada in Japan back in the early 90s. They yeah. called him Kendo yeah. Nagasaki. Yeah, yeah. Well, well he certainly, he certainly does so not fun. have the expertise compared to Seth Rollins, but he does have the motivation. And right now, I want to send things over to our handsome trio over at Commentary, who are going to be calling our first match of SummerSlam. Guys, take it away. Well, thank, thank you very much, Charlie. It's good to be joined here at ringside with my broadcast colleagues, Tom and uh, Byron, Tom Phillips and uh, Byron Saxon over there. But yes, uh, my, my colleagues are absolutely right. I mean, being this is a moment for Dominic Cruz to truly prove himself, and the unpredictability of a street fight makes the, the, the result very, very unpredictable and, and, and very, very unlikely tonight. It's Dominic Mysterio's first ever WWE match in a street fight against Seth Rollins later tonight at SummerSlam, but it's time for our first action of the night here on the kickoff show. is for the United States Championship. Introducing first from Stone Mountain, Georgia, weighing in at 240 pounds, he is the United States Champion, Apollo Crews! And a big advantage for Apollo Crews in this matchup against the leader of the Hurt Business MVP in this United States title match. Both Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin are barred from ringside. It was a great call, a great game plan established by the United States champion because Apollo Crews knows now if he defeats MVP tonight and successfully retains the United States championship, there are no more excuses to be had by MVP. An opportunity for Apollo Crews to once again prove who is the United States champion. Earlier today, Apollo Crews was expressing just how happy he is about the stipulation he earned for this title defense against MVP. Hey, what's up, P? Look, man, I just wanted to let you know that tonight you're not going to be all alone. Even though your boys are banned from ringside, this is the WWE Thunderdome. So maybe, just maybe, you'll see one of their faces on the screen cheering for you. And I'll be sure to give them a wave after my hand is raised and I am still the United States Champion. And Joe, this is a great experience for us and Apollo Crews, our first time inside WWE Thunderdome. I mean, the Thunderdome is absolutely a unique environment, uh, uh, one that I've never been in before, and uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how it affects the athletes tonight. Well, we're gonna find out how it's going to affect Apollo Crews' opponent right now. MVP with an escort, even though Lashley and Benjamin, once this match is underway, are barred from ringside. Yeah, let's make sure that Shelton Benjamin and Bobby Lashley adhere to the rules, okay? Her business not allowed at ringside. But let's not get things twisted here, gentlemen. What you're looking at walking down this ring right now is a very, very dangerous MVP. It's an MVP who feels he's been wrong, that he's had his face spit in, and he's not going to take it anymore. And tonight, the SummerSlam kickoff show is presented by Good Humor's WWE Superstars Cookie Sandwiches, leaping from the top rope to a freezer near you. You know, I think right now, Samoa Joe, that MVP is under a serious pressure cooker right now because he understands he doesn't have the security blanket at ringside. He's got to do this all on his own, and if MVP can't get it done tonight, it's back to the end of the line. So with the almighty Bobby Lashley and the 24-7 champion Shelton Benjamin in the locker room, the question is, can MVP capture his third United States title tonight? This all started because MVP extended, uh, in his mind, an olive branch 
towards Apollo Crews, trying to get Crews to, the Crews to join the Hurt Business. Apollo Crews said, listen, I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made champion. I don't want to go this route. And now MVP has been hounding Apollo Crews to try and capture the title. Look, MVP got embarrassed because Apollo Crews did not want his help or his assistance. And now MVP could have uh, another embarrassing moment on his hands. But the first action of the night oh, here. What a beautiful the moment into an E-bar. Yeah, great job here by MVP. Apollo Crews gets to the bottom rope early on here in this matchup. Joe, what does MVP have to do to outmaneuver Apollo Crews? But what he's doing right now in this match, MVP needs to use his skills. He needs to ground Apollo Crews. What many people don't know about MVP, he's broadly expanded his submission game. He knows how to put you on the mat, and he knows how to punish and torture you. Uh, brings Crews right down to the mat, to your point, now into a cover. Crews trying to put away this title defense early on. Sunset flip. Here's the cover by Crews. Kick out by Porter, and the 240-pounder Crews showing his athletic ability, Porter outside the ring. Gonna make MVP think about it. Paula Cruz letting him know, I had you that close. And MVP calling for a timeout as the WWE Universe is a part of WWE Thunderdome looks on. Right now, The, of course, the title can only change hands via pinfall or submission inside the ring. You know, brilliant move by MVP. You regroup, you reassess, and you reattack it. That's exactly, these are, these are the protocols he follows when he's in that ring. But again, Joe, this is different territory. Normally, MVP, roll out of the ring, talk to Bobby Lashley, oh. Shelton Benjamin, <laughs> wait, 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 hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Oh, and the official was trying to separate Cruz from MVP, and the veteran took advantage. And, and, and this is what MVP does best. He is a ring Whoa. general. He is a tactician. Oh. But the athleticism by, by Apollo Cruz. That is what Apollo oh. Cruz does best. Right, Joe, I talked about trying to outmaneuver Cruz. How do you keep up with the man who makes it look all too easy? Uh, you, you definitely don't beat him in a, in, in a physical Whoa. contest. You beat him in a mental one. You Whoa. think faster than him because you can't move faster than him. Apollo Crews looking very sharp out of the gates here in this matchup in Byron. The United States title is something Apollo Crews worked 11 long years to achieve. Uh, 11 young, uh, long years, lots of roadblocks, injuries, setbacks. At one point, Apollo Crews even doubted himself, doubted what his future could hold. But this is a brand new Apollo Crews we are seeing here. Well, hard on the outside, and I believe Crews went face first off of the steel stairs. That could be a game-changing moment in this match for MVP. That could be a night-changing moment for Apollo Crews. He may not be getting up from that. Watch this again. Oh! Hard in the steel stairs with Apollo Crews, and now MVP has taken control. Title cannot change hands via count-out or disqualification, but MVP gonna explore the space. Oh! Exploring our space. Oh, and the Hurt Business is rumbling nice. around the Thunderdome. And now rolls back inside the ring. Resets the count, but both superstars back inside. Now MVP can dish out some punishment to Apollo Crews. And Tom, this is the pace that MVP needs to maintain. He needs to wear down Apollo Crews. Uh -oh. oh, right to the back of the neck as MVP was hung up. <laughs> well, all strategy out the window there. I mean, now MVP, he needs to recover, and he needs to get out of the way fast. And Cruz about to take off. Oh, oh, and again, Joe, MVP wisely using his surroundings, the environment, the ring itself to his advantage. You know, some people are captains, some people are lieutenants, and some people are generals, Tom, and that is what MVP is when he's in that ring. MVP calls himself the CEO of the Hurt Business. Now up to the top, Apollo Crews could be in trouble. Oh, so complex. Man. Both men down hard. Both men came down hard on the back of their heads. I mean, watch this again. Oh, it's nasty either way. Now a cover here from MVP to win the title and a kick out by Crews. Very close call for Apollo Crews, similar to how Apollo Crews nearly beat MVP at the start of this matchup. And again, what an atmosphere it is here inside WWE Thunderdome. I cannot wait to see SummerSlam, the biggest party of the summer, streaming live on the WWE Network inside this amazing state-of-the-art experience. And down goes MVP outside. And now Apollo Crews is not going to waste any Watch time. Watch the skies. Over the top, down goes MVP. <laughs> uh, again, uh, think about the impact from the superplex we saw a few moments ago, and now the impact of... This dive outside the ring, Apollo Crews, incredible height, incredible agility, sacrificing his body to take out his challenger. 
Well, you know the thing or two about being a big man and moving quite like that, but Apollo Crews just something different now with a count of seven. Crews trying to get himself back in the ring. Gotta hurry, gotta this hurry. This is not going well for MVP. I mean, he needs to get in that ring. Count of nine, and Crews oh. and MVP both beat the count. And this United States title match will continue. Great wherewithal from both Apollo Crews and MVP to make the count in time. This match has taken its toll on both these superstars. Oh, and they're jarring at each other, Tom. And Byron, normally in a situation like that outside the ring, you would have seen Lashley or Benjamin try and come and intervene on MVP's behalf. That's not an option here tonight. Exactly. This is, oh, the situation is throwing MVP off his cable. Oh, the Cruz oh, oh, is going up. Cruz is pummeling MVP in the corner. Paul Cruz understands whoa, whoa. this is what it's going to take to retain his United States Championship. Give him that disrespectful beat. Into the corner, and Apollo Cruz continues to push the advantage. Do it again. Splashing down on MVP. Swing Buster. This could be the beginning of the end for MVP. And the standing moonsault. Could this help him retain the title? Cruz, the cover. Oh, shoulder up by MVP. Last thing Apollo Crews can afford to do is get frustrated. I mean, by far the best, the best string of offense that Apollo Crews has been put together, been able to put together all night. Oh, now oh, trying watch to, this, watch this. Oh, trying to set him up with a toss oh. power bomb. Hard to get the 250-pounder MVP off his feet. Uh-oh. Looking for the playmaker. Hold on a second. Whoa. Oh, now Cruz. The lift. The power. Oh, oh, oh. The toss power bomb by Cruz. Yes! Cruz retains the United States title! To be sure with and still the United States champion, Apollo Cruz! Congratulations, Apollo Cruz, making MVP eat his own words and retaining the United States Championship in the process. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, we're not done to, yet. Here comes we're not done yet. Hurt business, Lashley and the 24-7 champion, Benjamin, and Apollo Crews oh, yeah. doing the wise thing and escaping the two-on-one attack. Yeah. No, sir. Both Benjamin and Bobby not Lashley today. couldn't resist. Not today. But the story is, and still, and still, United States champion, Apollo Crews. And just over eight minutes until the SummerSlam pay-per-view begins streaming live right here on the WWE Network. It's still mine! Coming this summer on your console, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Becky Lynch, The Undertaker, Sergeant Slaughter, And Andre the Giant. World of Tanks, SummerSlam. Play for free. All right, good for Apollo Crews getting out of there in a hurry. And then the SummerSlam kickoff is brought to you by Welch's 100% grape juice. And now we turn our focus to another championship match happening here tonight at SummerSlam. It's Drew McIntyre. He's looking to defend his first WWE Championship against Randy Orton. And it's not just for himself, but for the many legends that Orton has completely disrespected in his quest to become the best. So can McIntyre serve up, serve up this deserved justice, or will he become just another name or the legend killer to add to his list with an RKO out of nowhere? 20 years I've been here in WWE. They say you're lucky if you make it out of this industry with a handful of friends. I had Edge. I had Christian. I had the big show. And I have Ric Flair. I was the youngest WWE World Heavyweight Champion, and I went to win that title 12 more times. My accolades, my consistency, and my title reign. The greatest wrestler ever. I have done what I want to do, when I want to do it, to whoever the hell I want to do it to my entire career, and that people will not ever change. But something's missing. Drew, I'm talking to you now, buddy. Listen, you got a problem. You have what I want.
Randy Orton has spent 20 years preying on vulnerability. I do find it interesting though, when you brag about some of your accolades, you know, the ones that were fed to you on a silver spoon. You didn't lie awake in Scotland as a kid, thinking about how you were gonna make it to the WWE. Giving everything you could, sacrificing everything, did you, Randy? It was handed to you. I never had anybody cleaning up after me like Evolution did for you. I've spoken to the people that cleaned up the crap, the legit crap that you left behind and mate, you should have been fired way more times than I was fired. You're right. I should have been fired multiple times, but I wasn't fired. You wanna know why? Because I am more valuable to this company than you ever were or ever will be. You represent everything that is wrong with WWE. How many times can Randy Orton honestly say over the past 20 years, if you sat down with, I don't know, anybody in the back and passed on some of that knowledge that Ric Flair ever passed on to you? Huh? Never. I don't see somebody the boys in the bag respect. I see a selfish prick. You're not the Ric Flair that taught me everything. You are a junkie. You are washed up. You are a liability to me in my career. I'm not trying to take anything from you. Selfish, selfish prick. I have done what I want to do, when I want to do it, to whoever the hell I want to do it to. Son of a bitch. Even him. The SummerSlam, you're not facing a defenseless old man. You're facing a pissed off six foot five Scottish fire breathing dragon, and I am going to severely hurt you. Not just for me, for every legend you have ever kicked in the damn head. And when I RKO you through, when I take your title and put it over my shoulder, believe me when I say, you will never see it coming. Well, I think in those final words, Drew McIntyre really sums up how he feels. He is not a defenseless old man. In this match tonight, taking on Randy Orton, he is really also taking on the burden and really the problems that all of these legends have had with Orton in the past. Do you think he can get the job done tonight? No, I don't. I, not at all. I, in fact, I don't give a damn if Randy Orton's a good guy or a bad guy. Michael Jordan, I didn't watch him because he was some nice, heartwarming guy who hugged puppies and was good to people in the back. It's because he was the best damn basketball player on the planet. Randy Orton wants to go down as the greatest of all time. No one else in this company can say that. And I think Randy Orton gets it done. Amen. Booker? You know, I think Randy's dealing with something you know, inside. I mean, when you get in that same conversation as guys like John Cena, uh, guys like The Rock, you know, being the greatest of all time, you can start believing in your own press clippings. Other people, they, they, they pay no mind. They mean nothing. You look in the mirror and start winking at yourself, man, it could be a problem. <laughs> and I know I'm serious. And yeah. I think that's what Randy Orton is right now. And maybe after um, stepping inside with Drew McIntyre, he might have to check himself. I, I think this is the best, I hate to just be cliche, but I do think this is the best Randy Orton we've seen in years and years and years. I think he wins the title tonight. I think he gets, takes another step in etching his name in the history books as truly, people say it a lot, he's truly one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, without doubt, we've been saying that for years and every year he's better and better and better. Uh, it, I think Randy Orton's unstoppable right now. I don't want to see this reign for Drew McIntyre come to an end tonight, but Randy Orton's just continues to yeah. be on another well, level. Well, he is called the legend killer for a reason. And, you know, before we go off the air, Renee, I just want to give a little tribute to you. I know that we all have so much respect for you. I can really, you know, speak for everyone at this desk. And I think everyone behind us, behind the curtains, when I say that we appreciate you and everything you have done here in WWE. Well, I want to give a big thank you to uh, to WWE and the WWE Universe. You guys have all truly changed my life. So thank we you very you, much. Renee. Thanks, well, Renee, thanks for spending your last few minutes in WWE with us. And now 
we want to take a look at this woman right here, the Empress of Tomorrow. She is ready for her first of her two women's championship matches tonight. She's taking on Bailey first, and guess what, guys? You gotta head on over to the WWE Network to catch all the action. So subscribe right now and enjoy SummerSlam. Wants something that Braun has. <laughs> I am more than a man. I am the thing that nightmares are made of. The monster, Braun Strowman. The diabolical fiend, Bray Wyatt, for the Universal Championship.